Welcome to the 19th lecture of mechanics of materials. In the last lecture we derived the governing equations for a beam bending problem. The equation that we derived was minus sigma x x by y minus y naught equal to m z by i z z equal to e by r which is e d square delta y by d x square where r is the radius of curvature. And then we also saw in the last but previous lecture that d m z by d x plus v y has to be 0, d v y plus by d x plus q y has to be 0. Combining these two equations we obtain the equation d square m z by d x square equal to q y by d x square equal to q y and we combine all these equations to obtain a governing equation in terms of the applied loading q y and the unknown displacement delta y of x okay unknown displacement delta y of x okay. Now let us apply this problem apply this equations to solve some problems the first problem that I am going to look at is a simply supported beam okay subjected to a uniformly distributed load a uniform distributed load w which can be this same problem can be represented in one dimensional form as the following. Many of you would be familiar with this, this is of magnitude w, what the support tells us is this is a hinge support. So, delta y if I measure my coordinate system from here say this is x, this is y and this is z and this length is L. Then what uh, the scene support says is at x equal to 0 delta y has to be 0, it is free to rotate since it is simply support it can rotate freely okay, but it, it cannot resist any stresses since there is no continuity at the hinge the end it cannot resist any stresses okay. So basically that being a hinge it will resist the vertical deflection it will resist the horizontal deflection and the ends there will be the traction is acting on that T of E x should be F x E x plus integrated this over the area d a would be f of x e x plus f of y e y there is no shear coming on the other direction. So, there will be the traction that is acting on that surface similarly this being a roller end delta y at x equal to l has to be 0 and the traction that is acting on this end e of x d a x would be just this will be f b of y e y okay say this is a and this is b okay. So, that will be the boundary condition that we are going to apply okay. Now let us go about solving this problem I will use a one dimensional approximation from now on I have this u d l this u d l over length l okay. So, I have the equation d square m z by d x square is equal to q y which in this case since the load is acting vertically downwards would be minus w okay. Now then if I integrate it twice I will get m z to be minus w x square by 2 plus c 1 x plus c 2 okay. Now let us look at x equal to L and there is no horizontal force that is developed at x equal to L n there is no horizontal force that is developed and the ends since sigma x x has to be 0 
because of no continuity or no provision for horizontal stress to develop you will find that since sigma x x at x equal to L has to be 0 m z which is integral sigma x x into y d a x a x has to be 0 at m z at x equal to L. Okay. Now, let us look at this n inch n there is no horizontal force applied throughout in the problem. So, f x has to be 0 and there is no continuity of the member at the a end again. Since there is no continuity of the member at the a end there is nothing to support an axial stress sigma x x. If I cut there I have exposed sigma x x there is nothing on the other side the other side sigma x x is 0 the support does not provide that sigma x x and the ends at this end also m z at x equal to 0 has to be 0 since again sigma x x at x equal to 0 end is 0. Okay. So, I use this condition that m z at x equal to 0 is c 2 and since this is 0 c 2 has to be 0 and then I use the condition that m z at x equal to L has to be C 1 L minus W L square by 2 has to be 0 from here I get C 1 to be W L by 2. Okay. Hence, m z moment as a function of x is given by W by 2 into L x minus x square. Okay. Now, from the governing equations again once I know my moment I can estimate the shear force V y from this equation which I will do next. So, V y is minus d m z by d x which is minus w by 2 l minus 2 x. Okay. So, that is V y of x. Okay. Now, I am interested in finding where bending moment m z max occurs at occurs where is the question. To maximize a function I have to set the derivative to 0 the maximum of or minimum of a function will occur where the derivative of the function goes to 0 and the ends v y equal to 0 is L minus 2 x and that will be x is L by 2 this L by 2. So, maximum m z max will occur where m z is at x equal to L by 2 and that will be w L square by 8. Okay. That will be L square by 8 that is the maximum bending moment and this shows that shear force is 0 when maximum extreme bending moment occurs bending moment occurs. Okay. So, let us now first plot these things on this figure that is I am drawing the shear force and bending moment diagrams. Okay. The bending moment diagram is a parabolic equation. Okay. It is maximum at L by 2 and at x equal to 0 and x equal to L it is 0. So, I know that it is 0 here, 0 here and then it is maximum at L by 2. Now, the question is on which side I have to plot. Okay. Usually you take the positive bending moment to be plotted on the top and negative bending moment to be plotted at the bottom, but you will follow the convention that the bending moment diagram the line will coincide with the uh, line where the tension occurs. Okay. The beam bends like this you can see that the top surface is in compression and the bottom surface is in tension because the length at the bottom has to increase length at the top has to 
decrease for it to when it curves like this ok. Hence what happens is the tension occurs at the bottom. So, you will plot the positive bending moment at the bottom and negative bending moments at the top ok. So, at L by 2 you have W L square by 8 this occurs at L by 2 ok. Now, it is a parabolic equation. So, I it is not a linear equation. So, I come join this like this. It becomes a parabolic curve like that ok. Now, let us plot the shear force. Let us plot the shear force this is the bending moment diagram what I am plotting now is the shear force diagram ok. What happens for the shear force at uh, x equal to 0 from here V y at 0 is minus W L by 2 and V y at x equal to L is W L by 2 ok. Now, what is the meaning of this? The shear force has a sign which corresponds to the sign of the shear stress ok. So, we will plot it with the sign as such and shear force at L by 2 is 0. So, the shear force variation would be something like this it is a linear curve. ok. So, it is negative here positive here this is a positive bending moment W L by 2 and that is W L by 2. Let us understand why this is negative and this is positive ok. So, if I take a section here negative shear the positive shear force should act like this this is a positive shear force this negative meaning it is acting upward there which is right because I am applying a downward force. So, the resultant will be an upward acting force on this phase this is a positive shear and the reaction force is acting upward there ok. So, that is why the sign of the shear force changes from the left end to the right end ok. What it means is from force equilibrium you can see that this reaction force should be W into L by 2 and this reaction force should be W into L by 2 both acting vertically upwards. So, when the beam is symmetric we expect the reaction forces to be symmetric same ok. Now, we have found the bending moment and shear force shear forces next let us find the stresses and displacements ok.